Well, here we go. I just purchased a amp camp amp from DIY Audio. It uh, was a total price of three hundred and twenty-seven dollars, uh, and that includes all the electronics, the circuit boards, and the chassis. The uh, every, you know here's the components, the electronics components, circuit boards. This is how it arrived, and uh, shipping and packaging looks good. The uh, MOSFETs and transistors all arrived in a nice uh, little stat pack. And uh, we even have a little bit of wire. It comes with a instruction sheet and the schematic. Comes with a Meanwell power supply. It's a model GST. Uh, 120 a 24 so this is a 120 watt power supply at 24 volts uh, meanwhile supplies have a pretty good reputation for uh, reliability but um, I have had some experience with meanwhile uh, power supplies uh, not meeting FCC or CE line conducted emissions we will give it a test and see how well it does um, about a week or so after the electronics kit arrived, um, the chassis arrived, and this is how it came uh, packaged, and uh, it looks to be well packaged, and I don't see any damage. So I have never shot a video from above like this before, so we will see how it works. Uh, hopefully we can see the uh, circuit boards here and then I also downloaded uh, this picture here of how the system is wired part of this design is when you first look at this amplifier you're gonna go oh those are big storage capacitors um, they're not uh, storage capacitors for the power supply they're actually the AC coupling caps for the uh, analog output since this is a single ended class A design uh, the uh, output has a uh, DC bias on it and it needs to be removed before it goes to your speakers I have this little handy dandy tool I've had for uh, a couple of decades and uh, I use that to preform my parts the standard quarter watt resistors uh, usually use this uh, 0.5 or half inch uh, spacing. Some of these uh, precision resistors are hard to read the uh, color bands so I've made my best interpretation and then I measured them with a meter and then wrote down the uh, value on the tape so it'll just be a little faster to assemble. I'm going to install R12 right here. Pull it out from the tape. There's two. There's one on each circuit board. Put it into the form. Bend the resistor. So, and then I uh, like to have all of the bands go the same way, reading right to left. And I'll just start loading these boards up. And then you can see I'm giving them a slight bend on the back side to hold them in place uh, before I solder them. I'll show a few more. I'm not going to show all of the uh, loading of the uh, components as that would be a pretty boring video I believe. And I'm not going to load all of the resistors and components and solder all of it at once because I kind of feel that that gets all the uh, gets too many uh, leads out here on the back side 
and it gets hard to get your soldering iron to everything. Okay, I'm getting close on all the uh, quarter watt resistors. I've been looking for this, uh, looks like they didn't ship enough 10K resistors for this R13. But then I saw this note down here saying that R13 is 33.2K. And uh, that's this guy. The uh, LED must have been running a little too bright, I guess, maybe. I don't know. And so they went to a... Uh, higher value resistor to uh, reduce the current going to that LED. I have all of the uh, quarter watt resistors installed so I'm going to solder these parts in and uh, clip the leads and then we'll move on to the other parts. I am using a uh, water soluble uh, flux solder. It is um, this uh, Kester Flux 331 and I really like this stuff. I'm using a Heiko uh, FX888 soldering iron. I to speed things up it makes it a little bit messy but the solder looks uh, the soldering will look really good. I'm just going to use a little bit of flux, additional flux on uh, all of these resistors and it gets a little messy but the the solder connections look really good and it's easy to solder this way okay to the soldering See this goes pretty fast. I'm going to do this other side. I've added a little bit more light to uh, my desk here and we'll see if this uh, makes it so we can see what's going on a little bit better. So ideally you would want to, when you're soldering these, you want the solder to flow all the way through the pad and uh, go to the other side of the board. All of the quarter watts are uh, installed so now we'll go for these uh, larger resistors which are the three watts and uh, I'll just form all those with a pair of uh, duck bill and uh, I like to get the values up, just makes it look prettier. All of the three watt resistors are in, so let's go for the uh, capacitors now. They shipped with uh, four of these 10 microfarad. They're all labeled. Typically on electrolytics, the stripe is the negative. So these will all just uh, go right in, no problem. The lead spacing on the circuit board is not quite right to allow the uh, capacitors to seat flush on the circuit board, so there's going to be a millimeter or two. They're going to be standing maybe a millimeter or two in the air. I don't want to push them all the way down and stress the uh, connections inside the capacitor. Okay, and then there's this uh, larger cap, which is a thousand microfarads at 16 volts. Where does that go on the schematic? C2. Okay, that's uh, right across uh, this uh, NPN transistor and I was a little concerned about the voltage rating, but it's not going all the way across the power supply, so we are fine. That's all of the uh, small capacitors. I'm going to put these uh, 
output uh, capacitors in next. So these are a little trickier. I have to hold that in with one hand and I'm going to put a glob of solder on there just to tack it in for a second. Okay, just to pack it in and then we'll go back in and solder it. Going to trim those. Okay, that's all of the components except for the transistors. So I just unwrapped the chassis because I wanted to verify the placement of the MOSFETs, the IRFP240s. It looks like the bends need to occur right at the shoulder on the uh, MOSFETs. I'll use my uh, duck bills to perform that bend right there at the shoulder. And I also, I don't want to solder these down. I, I guess I should maybe read the instruction manual, but I would not want to solder these down until I know what the spacing is for the spacers underneath this circuit board. So I'm going to pause for a minute and look at what uh, my spacer hardware looks like. So I just went online and looked at the uh, website for the first time on uh, the construction details and they do not provide these for uh, screws or standoffs, just the standoff here in the middle. Now um, I'm going to do this just a little bit out of order. So what I want to do is, because I want to wash my circuit board after I've got all the components in and I want to make sure that these transistors fit properly. So I'm just using this as a jig right now. And I'm going to solder that. And uh, then I'll finish putting in the rest of the transistors. So I just put in this central screw. These are all lightly held in place so I can solder uh, these transistors. Again, I'm just going to do a little bit of uh, flux. Okay, I just uh, removed these from the uh, heat sink here uh, that I used for a jig to make sure that the power MOSFETs were in the uh, proper location and the proper height. And now these are ready to be washed. I'll be using some hot water toothbrush and then I will uh, blow them off with uh, compressed air and they will look uh, nice and pretty. I just uh, washed these boards. They look nice and clean now. To this point it took maybe just a little over an hour to load these components. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on the uh, thermal pads between the uh, MOSFETs and the heat sink. I want to center these pretty good over the holes.
We used a washer and a split washer. Tighten that up just loosely. These small screws, it's going to be a tendency to over tighten these and th uh, strip out the screws. Maybe I'll have to show a amplifier that I designed a while ago. There we go. I'm going to tighten these up slightly. That's good. Now that I've got these uh, two units assembled here, I want to make sure that I don't have any improper connections between the MOSFET and the heat sink. So I've just got my uh, DMM here. I'm going to put my DMM into this uh, tapped out hole here because anodized aluminum is non-conductive. So I can do this and I don't get any measurement. So I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to test over here, make sure that my you know my meter connection is good and now I'm going to check each leg of the MOSFETs to make sure that I've got isolation so there's a connection there we'll come back to that on the schematic we can see that Q1 the source of the uh, transistor is connected to ground and this is connected over here so I can check a couple of these grounds and so there's the source it goes GDS ground 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 so that connection here is 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 valid next thing I'm going to do is uh, install all the connectors on the back panel and uh, wire that up uh, I just looked at the instructions online for the amplifier and uh, the instructions look really good for getting this wired so I'm not going to really show anything here um, I'm just trying to decide whether I want to use the uh, wire provided or if I'm going to use some of my own wire um, I have a selection of uh, silver plated uh, Teflon I've got the uh, connectors all installed here and uh, everything looks good. Um, just a tip, I will use a screwdriver to hold the banana while I'm tightening this screw on here and these are all vertical, these holes, and I've taken off the thumb screw portion so that uh, I can do the wiring more easily and have it sit flat. But I'm going to do something like that. Come on, stop fighting me. For the uh, back panel wiring, I'm going to use a no clean um, flux solder. Let's get this uh, first piece soldered in. Okay. That's the first of our uh, back panel. So I was just going to start hooking up the, uh, you know, the hook using this hookup wire for the power supply, and just found out that the uh, supplied wire is is not stranded, and um, hmm, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, in my opinion, this should be stranded wire. Uh, if you're doing a lot of experimentation and pulling this apart and putting it back together, the uh, 
single strand wire here has a greater propensity to uh, break. This is what it looks like so far. Uh, I'm varying from the instructions a little bit. This is uh, this wire is a much heavier gauge and so I don't need to run uh, two lengths of it. This wire is actually going to be uh, have more capacity than the two wires that were provided and this is uh, a Teflon jacket with uh, a silver plated copper. Uh, this is good stuff. I'll go ahead and add a piece of heat shrink on here for uh, make it look prettier and add a little bit of uh, protection. Well I've got uh, the back plate all wired with the uh, flying leads here and uh, you'll see that I didn't um, use all the wire that came with the kit. Um, I wanted to use stranded wire for pretty much everything. The only places I used uh, some of the uh, solid core were some of these connections here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wire the LEDs. <clears throat> I'm going to use the blue LEDs and those will be a little tricky to mount. I'm going to use heat shrink on the legs. Typically you can see that this LED has uh, two lengths of leads that might be hard to see. Um, I'll get it down here. Long lead, short lead. And typically the uh, positive is going to go to the long lead. I have my uh, DMM set up in uh, LED mode. So I will just confirm that. Yes, that's correct. And I'm going to be cutting these leads uh, shorter. So I'm going to just mark the in uh, I'm going to cut that lead to about right there and I'll show you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to tin these leads in the wires and note that I've already got uh, some heat shrink slid way down on the wire here and uh, we'll just attempt to tack these on. Good. That looks bad. So I'm going to add just a touch of flux on that one and redo it. Perfect. And then I'll heat shrink those down. Got my hot air gun set for 150 C. Manual uh, suggests using some of this uh, heat shrink they provided to put around the LED so it gives it a more snug fit in the chassis. Yeah, as you can see, that's pretty loosey goosey. And uh, maybe with the heat shrink on here, it will uh, give us a little bit of an interference fit. So we'll cut some of that off and give it a whirl. Um, I suppose you could also use uh, some maybe some hot glue. Okay so I've got the heat shrink on there. Jam it in this hole here. 
and yeah, that gets a pretty good connection that probably won't fall out. Maybe a touch of glue would keep it. And so I'm going to retwist that up. I'm holding the lead so I'm not twisting the leads on the LED. Okay, I'm bolting uh, these uh, pieces on now. And what I'm going to do is uh, I've got them loosely on and I'm going to turn it sideways so that I get the angle here flush with the bottom of the heatsink. I'm going to go ahead and bolt this back panel and the front panel on now so I can uh, trim up the wires and uh, get them all cut to uh, length. I'm going to kind of press the wire down to the bottom and then uh, come up and over. That will give me uh, plenty of room rather than just doing this as, as the crow flies type thing. I won't bore you with uh, me doing all of that. I'll come back in a minute. Hey, let me try this again. Um, I guess I was a little confused on which screws go where. So I originally had these zinc or stainless screws in the back and was complaining about them not being long enough. Uh, I believe actually the black ones go in there. I'm going to install the switch next and uh, I think I'm going to use some spade connectors to attach the uh, power lines uh, on to the back of the switch so I can disassemble it a little easier. I've got my two wires for the power switch uh, crimped uh, but I'm also going to solder these. Okay, I've got both these cables soldered. I'm going to go ahead and pre-install these on the switch. Just working more on the uh, internal hookup. I'm going to let me get this better out there and. I'm going to dress this up with some uh, zip ties once I uh, get all the wires where I want them to be. And I'm getting close. Let's power this up. I actually did power up just once before um, and I didn't have a recording so this isn't my first power up so you're not going to see any sparks or flames um, but here's what I did so I am going to use my bench supply here just so I can watch the current to make sure that if I see anything catastrophic going wrong I can hurry and turn it off um, this uh, bench supply is rated for 3.2 amps um, and the uh, specifications say that uh, this has a bias setting of 1.45 amps so call it 1.5 so 3 amps so this supply should handle it so if this uh, starts to current limit I know I've got a problem I have this set for 24 volts you might not be able to read it and I have it set for a maximum of 3.2 amps down here at the current limit so uh, I haven't uh, done the uh, bias adjustment yet so I'm going to turn this on I'm going to watch the supply and it ramped up to just shy of 3 amps so nothing catastrophic is happening right now. I do have um, my little portable DMM and I have that connect, connected to the center lead and we can see that my bias point is off. Um, we should be splitting the 24 volts on our bias supply. 
So this should be 12 volts. Uh, the pot right now is uh, straight up about 12 o'clock. I'm going to slowly move this pot to uh, realize 12 volts. So I would say this, the pot right now, is at about 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock right now. Okay, I'm going to pause this for a second while I get it rotated to look at the other supply. Okay, I have it rotated. We're now going to look at the other amplifier. And I'm just going to go right to about that 1 o'clock. So I think that's looking good for the moment. Um, uh, I think the next thing we're going to do is uh, see if we can put any audio through it and see if it works. Before I hook this unit up to any of my test equipment or speakers, uh, I want to make sure that there's no DC voltages on any of the I.O. So what I'm going to do is check that right now. Uh, this is ground. I'm going to touch that to my 24 volts so I know that that's a good ground. Now I'm going to uh, test all of these I.O. and make sure that I don't have any DC voltages. Okay, so that looks good. have this hooked up to my audio precision generator and my oscilloscope and I just want to see if I'm getting gain and uh, you know I'm uh, passing this uh, sine wave and I've got a 1.6 volt input so pretty high and I have my uh, output here and I am 5 volts uh, per division, so I basically got one, two, three, almost four, so almost uh, a 20 volt swing. I'm going to pop over to the other side. There we go. Amplifier is working. First try, basically. Uh, we will make a couple more basic measurements, and then I'll button this up, and then we'll see what the performance is. Let's see if we can quickly verify a couple of these numbers to make sure that the amplifier is working. Uh, let's look at the gain first. It's specified as 10 dB. Um, right now I'm feeding uh, 1.72 volts into the amplifier. I'm getting out 6.4 volts. Let's go to dB gain. And our gain is 11.42. Uh, so that's really close to 10. Um, and you know that being off is no problem. In fact, I would prefer it to be a little higher than 10. Let's look at the input impedance. That's measuring 10.3 kilo ohms, so that's uh, really close. The uh, output it says uh, 4.5 watts. Let's just let's look at that. You go back to volts. So let's see if I take 6.3, 6.4 volts, 6.4, and then uh, square it. That's uh, 41 and 8 divide. That's 5 watts. So I don't have a load on this, but 5 watts is uh, close to 4 sensitivity. Um, yeah, those numbers are looking uh, really good. Noise, um, I'll just do a signal to noise ratio with uh, this 1.72 volt input and let's see what it looks like. 92, really good number. The amplifier works. We will button it up and do a uh, full suite of tests on it. It's finished. Um, and uh, it looks pretty good. 
those uh, blue LEDs are pretty. You know, the, the circuit boards probably only took me an hour or so to build. And um, the back plate here, uh, that took a while. Um, you know, that was probably an hour or so. And then wiring everything else up was probably an hour. Um, and then just kind of fiddling with the mechanical another hour. So, you know, maybe four hours total to put that together. And I'll show the inside here. Uh, I put a couple of zip ties to kind of clean up the lines. And uh, I think it looks uh, pretty clean. I mean, you know, really my only complaints would be uh, so far that uh, I don't like the use of the solid wire that was provided. Mounting of the LEDs is not ideal, but works. Um, and then mechanically, it, it, all the fit and finish is good. Uh, it would just be, I think, a little easier that if the uh, top and bottom plates were mounted to the actual heat sink itself. They could just do some blind taps here. So uh, the top and bottom half would fit. And then they could also do a through hole uh, here and here and then just use like a cap screw to go into the heat sink and then do the same with the back. And uh, I think it'd be much faster to assemble. Those are just kind of nitpicking. But anyways, it looks, uh, looks pretty good so far. That's about it and uh, stay tuned for uh, part two.